Good afternoon and welcome. I am so excited to be here with you and I hope you're excited too. Um, we are here for Successful Single and Ready, How to Attract the Love that You Want Without Stress, Worry, or Wonder. So let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Lori Bryant Woolridge. I am a certified feminine confidence coach and spiritual life coach. I'm also in the author of eight books, including The Power of Wow, A Guide to Unleashing the Confident Sexy You. I am an angel scribe, a love connoisseur, a joyful flirt, and as of about 18 months ago, single. So let me just uh, discuss a couple of these titles that I've given myself so that you understand where I'm coming from. So that love connoisseur, that just means that as far back as I can remember, I have been enticed by, enamored with, curious about, and an enthusiastic explorer of love in all of its different forms. And so that curiosity has led me to study love. And I've studied it on the spiritual level, which is where the angel scribing and channeling comes in. But I've also studied it on a more conventional side, the cultural and societal um, impact that love has on each of us as a person and our relationships and as a world. So I've been using this knowledge uh, that's garnered from both worlds to teach and lecture and do workshops and coach around love and relationships. So the joyful flirt part, I, mean, I know out of all the things that I could tout about myself, but I wanted you to know that about me, that I embrace the idea of joy and flirtatiousness in all its great, positive, delicious connotations. My baseline truth is that true masters learn through joy, and I embrace that position in everything I do in all parts of my life, professional, private, intimate, and with my coaching and my clients. So with that, let's move on. So that my expertise in feminine confidence and relationships and sensual and sexual esteem has led me to be interviewed on a whole lot of different media platforms. And you know, I'm not really surprised because the topics of women being confident in their personal uh, and sensual lives um, is really popular. And it's popular because we're so confused by it. Think about it, the world is really good at teaching us how to be good at what we do, but not so good at teaching us to be good at who we are, especially when it comes down to being a woman, a partner, and a lover. So you think about who sat you down to talk to you about love and relationships? Who sat down to tell you the nitty gritty about how it all works and what your role in a relationship is via somebody else's? Well, the answer is probably nobody. And we've relied on our moms and our sisters and our aunties and our girlfriends on romance novels and romantic comedies to tutor us in one of the most delicate and yet vital areas in our lives. And to be honest, sometimes that uh, advice has been as harmful as it has been helpful, but because it comes from someone else's unique perspective, someone else's experience with love that may or may not match ours. So that's why I am here today, to not only give you a peek into a new next level mindset that's gonna help you attract the love that you want without even looking. I mean it, no searching, no more finding, where to go, all that kind of stuff, zip, gone. We're gonna talk about how you can better understand yourself as a partner, your desires, not only in the kind of relationship you want, but the kind of partner you want, so that you can begin to trust your choices. We're gonna talk about how you can, why you keep attracting the same unfulfilling relationships that never last, and how you can change that. And we're gonna start with the five things that are keeping you from the love that you want. And more than anything today, I want you to leave with a newfound sense of hope for a loving future, a deliciously shared future, one that many of you may have written off already as just not gonna happen. Because with hope comes the possibility, and with the hope of love and love, everything is possible. 
even if your sad and sorry track record has you thinking otherwise. So being sad and lonely has an emotional cost, okay? It takes a toll on your feminine confidence and your feminine esteem. It leaves you feeling discouraged and buying into destructive myths about yourself, about love, about relationships. And it has you giving up on your loving dreams and settling for much less than you desire and deserve. And sometimes that settling looks like just selling into a relationship that no longer fulfills you, that doesn't feel comfortable, but you're just afraid to leave. And sometimes it's settling for the idea that you are going to be alone for the rest of your life. Not true. It also takes a physical toll on you. Research, research has shown that meaningful relationships play an important role in our health, happiness, and longevity. That those romantic relationships you crave, well, the touch, sex, and caring and attention that comes with them can fend off the loneliness and the isolation that's really, really bad for your health. And it also shows that people who are lonely are less happy, their health declines earlier in midlife, brain function declines even sooner, and they live shorter lives. So the truth of the matter is that wanting companionship, support, and yep, great sex that comes with a loving partner is more than just a want. In a very human, compelling, and necessary way, it is a legitimate need. And the inability to fulfill this powerful need can have you wondering what's wrong with me. And that's a legit question because you are women accustomed to being proactive and successful problem solvers. But when it comes to love, you feel at a total loss and out of your league. So I want you to hear this loud and clear. There is nothing wrong with you. Nobody's perfect. You're not even supposed to be perfect. And whatever might be off balance, it's nothing that a little bit of tweaking cannot help. But when it comes to finding and keeping love, there is something fundamentally wrong with the thoughts you're thinking, the energy you're emitting, and the actions you've been taking. So the bigger question is, what am I doing wrong? And if you stay with me, the burning question, the burning answer to that question is going to become crystal clear. So look, I know how busy you are and how even taking this hour to slow down and join me is a huge deal. And I want to commend you for valuing yourself enough to make time for something that has caused a lot of rejections, feelings of frustration, and pain. But it's also an important and vital part of your overall happiness. So I want you to know that I see you, I value you, and I honor your commitment to yourself. And I want to give you something in return, absolutely free, no strings attached, not trying to sell you anything. But I want to give you an opportunity to take all this information I'm going to give you, to ask questions, to apply it directly to your own situation, and have a plan to come and start moving in the direction of your dreams. So you're going to want to stay if you are tired of all work and no love and want to bring some loving balance into your life. If you feel like you've only had bad luck when it comes to love and you can't trust yourself or your choices, if you feel rejected by unavailable mates who will not commit and who leave you wondering why you aren't lovable, and if you have looked everywhere and are losing hope that you will ever find you're that elusive soulmate, then you're gonna want to stick around. Because women like you, Successful women who are single, not by design, but by circumstance, are constantly asking me, where do I find love? I don't know where to look. I don't know where to go to meet the right kind of person. Well, what if I told you that it's not your job to look for love, nor is it your job to know how or where your partner is going to appear? Because contrary to what you've been told or led to believe, searching for love is not how true, lasting, fulfilling relationships are found. Ladies, finding your mate is not supposed to be a game of hide and seek. And yet, you've been seeking. You've been searching for love, for companionship, 
for commitment, for intimacy, for a more balanced life. You've been searching, but you keep coming up empty and you can't figure out why. Well, a large part of it is that you've been using the same old mindset with the same old tools and doing the same old things to get the same old results. You've been trying to change the outside, your body, your wardrobe. You know, you've been getting that look at me makeover. You've been going where the boys are, to the stadiums, the courses, the clubs, the churches. You've been dating by app, by speed, by niche. You've been meeting up to mate up, and you're still ultimately ending up alone. Why? Well, because you have been using that same please pick me, pick me mentality, gussing yourself up and putting yourself out there for someone else to pick, someone else to validate, someone else to prove to you that you are worthy and lovable. Well, today I'm offering you a peek at a new, more powerful, next level mindset. One my clients now use to help them attract the relationships they want. One that I use in my life to attract what I want. So what do I mean by next level? Basically, concepts and tools you are already using on an unconscious level that when you understand and master them will bring you exactly what you want without the stress, without the worry, without the wondering, where are they, where is it, when's it coming? Now understand, these are changes that will transform your love life from the inside out. So if you're looking for a game changer that puts you back in charge of your love life and has you feeling positive and blissful and productive and living your best life, all the while knowing that you are enough and love is going to find you, then stay with me. Because once you understand and implement this next level mindset, you're going to stop searching and start living your life with a zest and gusto that you've never known before as you attract love. You're gonna answer that age old question, who am I as a woman partner and lover? And you're gonna know exactly why and how lovable you are. And you know what that means. No more tap dancing to show anybody your worth and value. And you're gonna know how to give love as well as receive love in a way that attracts more quality love your way. Now, before we go on, know that this is not for you if you are content living the single life and not trying to convince yourself that you're content, but truly content. If you're looking for a quick fix and a magic bullet, this really is not for you. Again, this is transformation from the inside out. If you're not willing to become the best possible partner you can be in order to attract the same or don't want to take control of your life with a new mindset, it keeps you in charge and you want to stick to the please pick me method, then this definitely is not for you. So now that we know that we're all in the right place, one last thing I want to clear up before we move on. The, some of you may be questioning, you know, Lori, you said you were married for 31 years, been single less than two. With all due respect, what do you know about single life right now? Okay, legit, legit, legit. But if you really think about it, my single status puts me right there in the audience with you. So I must really have some true belief, some really positive success and experience in my own life with the things that I am sharing with you because I use them and live them and I'm willing to get out there on my own again after 31 years apply them to my own life. When I talked to my single friends about getting divorced, so many of them were like, Lori, think about this. You know, can you make this work? Because you have no idea what's out there waiting for you, which is no one. There are no men out there, especially our age. Pickings are thin. Think about what you're signing up for. And for a minute, their warnings made me stop and think what was I doing? I was really going to be 60 years old and single. It had been a long time since I'd been out there and things had changed drastically. I mean, what is this online dating stuff? But most importantly, what had changed was me. So I won't lie for a minute. I kind of panicked, you know, could I make this work? I mean, my marriage wasn't horrible, but for the last 10 years of it, I was there out of hap not out of happiness, but out of habit. 
but I had a great family. I had a great lifestyle. I enjoyed my life, even though within my marriage, I felt like I was suffocating. But maybe I could make it work. And then I took a breath. I pushed back the fear. And I fell back on what I absolutely know to be true. There is a great abundance of love out there, a huge abundance, just waiting to find me. And it's waiting to find you too. Look, I live what I teach. I always have, even when I was doing with no conscious awareness. And when I connected the dots of my love life, way back from high school through college and beyond, I realized that I had never looked for a mate, never. And that's not to say that I haven't been hurt or alone during periods of my life or have experienced, haven't experienced the heartbreak of love. But important relationships have always happened upon me while I was busy living my life. I never went out for a bar to, bar to look. I never was trying to actively find love. Here's how I got engaged. I had been in a four-year relationship where I was proposed to, but I knew that he just wasn't the one. And so I was busy getting my life together as a single person again and working on my career and doing my own thing when I was invited out by friends to go to dinner. At that dinner was a gentleman who was visiting from the West Coast. We hit it off. We went out the, while he was in town. And by the time he left, we said, you know what, let's try this long distance. And we stayed in touch. And it was great. And I felt like, you know, I was really falling for him. And then as luck, or as I know, the universe would have it, I was sent out on a temporary job um, into the same town that he lived in. So I went out there and we had the time to spend quality time together and get to know each other in a way we couldn't long distance. And I realized that even though I was falling for him, I wasn't falling in love with him. But I only had a few months left on the gig, so we continued to go out and have a great time. And then one day my aunt asked me if I would house sit for a friend. And so I went dressed up to go to lunch with Steve and I had this cute little blue dress on and these black beads. And I went to her friend's house and her grandson was there. And it was this immediate attraction between the two of us. And we kind of spent the next hour kind of flirting and talking and the kinetic energy between us was, you could feel it. So much so that we were standing in the kitchen and those beads around my neck just burst all over the kitchen. And his grandmother and mom and everybody were like, what the hell? And we were like, what the hell too? But we went out every day and night for six days. And the evening of that sixth day, we went to dinner and he pulled out a ring and he asked me to marry him. And you know what? I said, yes, right away, without hesitation, with no doubt. It felt right. I knew it was the right thing. I trusted my choice. So we were engaged in six days after meeting. We, were, uh, we got married a year later and we were married for 31 years. So here's my point. When you take the time to know yourself, know what you want, work on yourself as a partner and live your best life, the universe will send you the cookie crumbs to follow, leading you to everything and everyone you want. So the work to be done, ladies, is not where to search for someone to love you, but rather how to attract the right love by being the best magnet you can be. And that has nothing to do with what you have or how you look. So, are you ready? Let's begin with the five things that are keeping you single. First, these five things I've learned after 10 years of coaching women, I see it over and over. And a word to the wise, we always begin with you because you're the only person that can change. So starting with number five, it's what you think, not what you say that's keeping you single. So how many of you say you want a relationship but think, I just don't want to be bothered with the drama. You say you're ready and willing to share your life with a partner, but in your head you're thinking, but I, still, I really don't have time for this, or I don't really want to lose my, my freedom, or I love my apartment, I don't really want to share it with anybody. Those buts. 
How often do you declare what you want when it comes to love and a relationship without realizing how disconnected they are from your thoughts and what you've come to believe about you and relationships and your life? See, people think that thoughts are just thoughts, these little wisps of wonder that are here and then gone. But yesterday's thoughts created today's reality, just like today's thoughts are creating tomorrow. So what you think is vital and plays a central role in creating the lives and the loves we want. It's your thoughts, not your words, that matter. Because those thoughts create action. Or as I like to put it, where your mind goes, your butt follows. Negative thoughts create negative action. Positive thoughts create positive action. So when it comes to relationships, what thoughts are zipping through your head? And what part have they played in creating the unsatisfactory history that's brought you here today? And remember, these thoughts are also telling you how open you are to having the love that you say you want. Important to know because even sunlight cannot get through a closed door. Any of these sound familiar? I am sure you have your own ideas or reasons you don't have the relationship you want. But after a bit of thought and reflection, you're gonna to come to understand that these are just excuses you tell yourself to rationalize why you're still single. Rationalize why it's them, not you, standing in your way. You've got to stop what I call this think, stinking thinking because these excuses are a huge part of the reason you are still single. And when I say huge, I am talking colossal, ladies, colossal. See, those thoughts become what you believe and they're blocking you because they are directly informing the way you look at the world, which directly impacts your reality. And just like we all have our own unique fingerprints, each of us has our own reality as well. A reality constructed by our thoughts and experiences. So for example, if it seems like every partner you've had has eventually let you down, that your last partner was a cheater, let's say. And then after comparing stories with your girlfriends, you realize, wow, they've had people cheat on them too. And then you're looking at the news and you know TMZ and E! Entertainment, and you're seeing all these celebrities whose you know, mates have cheated on them. And then you start believing, you know what? All men are dishonest and cheat in some form or fashion. And so this now morphs into your perspective that men can't be trusted. And then you take action to guard your heart and not get hurt again. Or the next relationship, your actions become jealous and mistrusting and accusatory because in your reality, men cannot be trusted and therefore you can't be vulnerable. And the cycle of the failed relationship begins again. So if you want to attract that kind of love and maintain that kind of successful relationship, you've got to stop the negative thinking and set your mind on a positive course that transforms your perceptions and creates a new action and a new reality. This is just like my client, Drina. She was um, the mother of two, or she still is, um, divorced twice and is just getting out of a messy four-year living relationship when she came to me. And she was really devastated. Every single one of these important relationships had crashed and failed. And she felt like a total failure as a woman, even though in her professional life, she was kicking butt and taking names. And because of this, she was beginning to believe that she was meant to be single for the rest of her life. And she was also feeling lonely and as hell felt unlovable and worthless as a partner. So she came to me and her stinking thinking, was that accomplished men her age wanted someone younger because they couldn't handle her success. Again, these were the reasons she concocted that she could not find the quality kind of guy that she wanted. 
because they could not handle her success. Well, we had to do some real work in changing her stinking thinking because her reality, her life, she had become a build-a-mate partner. She was dating younger men with less and trying to mold them into her perfect partner. She was leading with her stuff because she didn't feel worthy. She didn't feel lovable instead of herself. So again, the first thing we had to do was change the way she thought of her world. And that shift in thoughts was big and it changed everything because it, it gave her entree into a new set of thoughts, beliefs, and perceptions that she could now work in a more positive way. So she said, I deserve a champion, not a charge. I deserve someone who, who is of my like, you know, who's like me, who I'm not trying to fix, I'm not trying to build that she deserved this man and that he does exist. Because remember, she didn't really think that men her age that were as successful as her existed. So what happened? Well, when I checked in and asked for an update, after all the work that we did, not only on changing her thinking, but then all the rest that she needed to work on to become the best partner she could be, she has started dating a real estate finance guy she met at a birthday party. Um, she th thinks he's the champion she's been wanting to align with. And, but what she does know is he's no longer a build -a mate He is a pre-assembled grown man. She doesn't know where it's going, but she doesn't feel the pressure anymore. She's really happy living a more balanced life that includes work and a healthy dating life. And she's attracting men who are seeing her for her and not herself because they have their own stuff. But she's also very confident, she's not sweating it, she's not worried, that eventually the perfect mate is going to show up and she's going to know him when she sees him. So how did she accomplish this shift in thought and change the whole projection of the way she saw her life? Well, here are some things that she did that you can teach to begin this shift. Figure out your quote-unquote reasons that you think you're not in relationship and really reflect on them. Are they reasons or are they excuses? Then you're gonna take that list and you're going to create a different set of thoughts that resonate, that feel true in your heart center. And you're gonna use those thoughts to stop the negative thinking. So as soon as you hear that negative thinking going, you're gonna interrupt those thoughts with these new thoughts until you have trained yourself to begin thinking always the new thoughts. And also you need to notice and eliminate your split desires. Make sure your words match your thoughts. So if you wanna be in a relationship and right now for the next six, seven months, you're too busy to really deal with it, that's okay. Your words have to say, I am open to a relationship when I am ready, right? So you wanna make sure you're keeping yourself open that your words match your thoughts. And that's how you begin to manifest what you really want. So number four, you keep attracting the same kind of partner and the relationships that go nowhere. Well, if you want something different, you've got to emit something different. You've got to change your vibe to attract your tribe of potential mates that are aligned with you, what you want and who you are. Okay, so attracting the kind of love and relationship is kind of a matter of quantum physics, which makes me really sm sound smart to say, but because I'm really math and science challenged, I just like to say it. But this is one scientific principle that I have come not only to understand, but to fully embrace. It's one I live my life by. It is one I teach my clients, and they are now using to attract into their life what they want. It is the law of attraction, which says that like energy attracts like energy. Now, this is, yep, a next level mindset tool. Now, if the idea of using a universal law to find love sounds unimaginable, that's just because you don't fully understand it. But the truth is, even though you may not understand it, You've been utilizing it and other universal laws every single day, like gravity. Gravity happens each and every time effortlessly, whether you like it or not. So if you drop your phone, whether you like it or not, it's going to fall to that tile floor. 
Well, the law of attraction when it comes to love and partners works the same way in the sense that it's always there working, whether you like it or not, attracting to you what of whatever energy you were putting out. So if your energy is positive or negative, you're getting back positive or negative. So yes, we are back to those limiting thoughts and the negative energy and action they create. So think about it. Think about your relationship history. Have you ever felt like you've been in the same relationship with the same issues and the same outcome over and over with the same partner, but you know, just had different faces so you could tell them apart? Well, I call that deja vu dating. The similarity of those partners is a function of your energy attracting theirs. Change your energy, change who and what you attract. See, you've been applying the law of attraction for years without ever being consciously aware. That's why I take my clients on this energetic journey of their most significant relationships so they can see the energy that they have been bringing into their life because of the energy they've been putting out. I call that the magnetic root energy. And it is truly, truly transformational. So this is my client, Anna. And Anna was single, sort of. She had been married five years and was, had been separated for almost a year and had decided she wanted to get divorced. So she didn't come to me to look for you know, a new relationship. She wanted to figure out why her relationships kept failing. So we did the work that we needed to do to, um, with her energy to create the composite man that she had been dealing with and attracting throughout her life. And by doing this, we were able to see the common behaviors that she and her partners exhibited. And then we took those behaviors and peeled them way, 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 way down until we got to that root magnetic energy. And while she was attracting a good percentage of her positive traits, the negative root energy was too powerful to counterbalance. And that's why her relationships continue to fail. So I, I know this is sounding a little bit swami salami, but it is such a powerful understanding of what energy you are using as your lure and your bait. Because it's not about your looks. It's not about all those outside things. It's about that energy exchange. So how did this insight help Anna? Or how does it help you? Well, first, it allows you to know what you need to work on. And that's the what's wrong with me part. In order to, to change what energy you're putting out so that you can attract that new positive, loving, committed energy back. So look, here's Anna's outcome. Once she had the insight of what was her root magnetic energy, we worked really hard together to do the self-love work that she needed to do. And with that work getting started and, be, and getting well into it, she was able to change the energy she was putting out. She also was able to change all those thoughts and beliefs about herself and about her marriage and her role in her marriage, also about her husband. And so then she had a second thought. She, Let's see if I can make this marriage work. And so with those insights, she went back to Mike and asked him to go back to counseling and for him to do his own work. Well, the happy news is they are back together and a much stronger Anna is working with her husband to make their relationship work. So how did she change her energy to attract the man she wanted in the man she already had? Well, much of the crucial work I did with Anna, again, revolved around that isolating that magnetic root energy, the negative energy that was a constant draw in her life, and then working with her to change it. So here's the deal, ladies. You've got to change your magnetic root energy. And until you understand what it really is, there's some things that you can do it to just raise your positive energy. And by just raising your positive energy, you're going to see a whole different um, vibe around you from strangers, from your family, whatever. So you raise your positive energy by upping your happiness quotient, 
just being happier. And you can start that immediately by just beginning to, to live and revel in your five senses. Become actively aware of everything you smell and touch and hear and taste because this puts you in the moment. And when you're in the moment, a couple things happen. First of all, you're much more appreciative. You're much more grateful of all the things that are going around you, things that we don't even notice most of our busy life. And so that appreciation and gratitude immediately makes you more happy. It immediately makes you more apt to look at yourself in a different perspective, in a more positive way. It also, when you're in the moment, you're not looking at the past, you're not worrying about the future. So you are just being happy and raising that positive energy. And next thing that you can do immediately is to find your passion. Most busy, successful women have no clue what they're passionate about when it comes to their true self. So finding and connecting to that joy has rewards that keep on giving, not only while you are attracting this new quality love in your life, but it keeps your love lasting and sustainable. It plays a huge role in keeping the love that you attract going on. So number three. You can't embrace what scares you. Fear is a big blocker when it comes to love. We are afraid of love, and so therefore we find all kinds of ways to avoid it or sabotage it. And as I told you, love is the thing that we most desire, understand the least, and fear the most. And yet, it is one of the things that no matter if your love life and history has been positive or negative, fear runs through it. And as you've learned thus far, all of your fears are wrapped around thoughts and experiences that have created this reality. But the truth is, you're not really afraid of love. It's not being loved in return that has you feeling all skittish. I see it here and coach around it every day. After a history of loving and not feeling loved in return or not getting the love in the, in the quantity and quality you believe you deserve, you've come to fear the very thing that you want so much. So first, know this. There is never, ever, ever anything to fear from love. Love is always the way. It is always the answer. It will never hurt you. It's impossible because it doesn't work that way. So it's that not feeling loved that hurts. So you want to get rid of the fear, not the love. And in order to attract the love that you want, you have to turn that love hurts, negative, limited thinking into believing that love is on the way. Love is the way. And once you begin to make friends with love, you can begin to do the work to lose the fear and so the, and the recognition that you are love and you are loved always. So Tracy's fear was she was really, really afraid that she would never get married. None of the women in her life, her family had, and she was desperate to break that curse. And that desperation impacted her thoughts, her beliefs, and her actions. So she first came to me for coaching around body and sexual confidence. And she was in a relationship with an NBA player and she felt very insecure about her looks and her ability to keep him satisfied. And we did a lot of work together, but mainly on her sexual confidence because we weren't able to address the real issue. She was so fearful of not ever getting married that she was trying to be everything that she thought he wanted. She was being everything and everyone but herself. Well, that relationship didn't last. And you fast forward five years and Tracy was back enrolled in SSR. And she um, was still desperate to get married and felt like Tom was running out. But this time we could do the work that she needed to do because she was ready to concentrate on the quality of her love and partnership. Okay. So. Tracy's report is she ended up getting back together with the basketball player, but in a different way. She is now um, 11 pounds lighter, madly in love with herself, um, 
in a way that she never was before, knowing what she wants, knowing what she wants in a partner, in a relationship. And guess what? She's no longer afraid of getting married. In fact, she says that she is not going to get married until she knows that this is exactly what she wants. And instead, she's living with Elle and she's concentrating on building an authentic relationship with him based on being authentically herself. So how did Tracy leave her fear behind? Well, first you got to know what frightens you about love. And many times it's something you're afraid you won't or can't have or a repeat of your history. You have to fall in love with yourself first before you fall for anyone else. And that is crucial because if you don't love yourself, how can anybody else? And more importantly, because now that you know about the law of attraction and how to use it to ben benefit you and use it deliberately, like energy attracts the same. So girl, you got to make sure your self-love is on point because you want to attract someone who's just in love, as much in love with himself as, he, as you are with yourself. So therefore you are sharing a cool, joyful, fabulous love and not trying to fill some gap or something that's missing. You need to practice love by falling in love as often as possible. And when I tell people that, they're like, what? That sounds kind of slutty. No, I'm talking about redefining love in a way that you were able to give it to everyone, including yourself, as little tiny gifts, the gift of being seen, the gift of compliments, the gift of being appreciated, the gift of being heard, the gift of validating somebody's worth and presence and, and just honoring them for who they are. Gifts, falling in love that you can do silently as you walk by somebody, wishing them love, wishing them kindness, wishing them you know, a great day without even opening your mouth. Practicing love that way makes love bubble up within you. And when love bubble up within you, again, that LOA is going to attract more love your way. You've also got to begin to accept the gifts of love being offered, like compliments, like random acts of kindness by strangers and others, and be generous in return. But learning to accept those gifts, those compliments, and that's a great place to start because think about how you accept accept or don't accept compliments. That helps you practice receiving love. And receiving love, that ability is just as important, if not more so, than your ability to give love. So number two, how do you trust what you have if you don't know what you want? And I hear it all the time. I've wasted a lot of time picking the wrong ones. I can't trust myself or my choices. If you don't know what you want, how can you trust it? And one of the most harmful and confusing byproducts of the pick me mentality is that the focus is never on what you truly want. It's focused on what you think they want and doing the pretzel dance to turn yourself into that person. That's exactly what Tracy found out. So I'm here to tell you that if you don't know what you want, that is what's hindering your ability to trust your choices when it comes to picking a partner. Because if, when you don't know what you want, you're apt to simply accept whatever's being offered. So how do you figure out what you want? Well, deciding is the first step in your creating and manifesting, and yep, we're talking another leveling up of your mindset. So creating and manifesting, in a nutshell, is the process of turning your thoughts into things, whether it be a job, a house, a car, or a relationship. Now, I've manifested everything from my current apartment to a car to a real-life whale to my relationships. And again, like the law of attraction, you're going to be surprised to realize how much you have already been using the superpower of yours, but mostly unconsciously. And when you learn to create and manifest on a deliberate level, girl, everything changes. So guess what? All those past relationships that you're trying to forget, yep, those you have created and manifested as well, the good ones and the bad ones because you play a vital part in creating every relationship you're in. So many of us are familiar with the vision boards, which are a popular tool to help people activate this law of manifestation. So take a look at this one. Perfect example of, of someone who is searching for love, is focused on the warm and fuzzy feelings of love, and not what she wants in a partner. 
So when I ask my clients what they want in a partner, so many of them feel like, you know, someone who loves me, someone who likes to travel, loves museums, loves to cook, and all those kind of things. And guess what? The universe will deliver just that, a good time. He may be hella fun, but he won't, he doesn't want to commit. He's not interested in kids. He's got a mountain of debt. Or he's controlling and he wants you all to himself. You get what you ask for, so you need to be specific and deliberate. So Ashley, my client, is a, a celebrity event planner who does a lot of weddings and parties. And while she was very successful, due to a messy divorce, she lost it all and was digging herself out of a deep financial hole. And more than anything, she wanted an, to get married again, and yes, to a man who loved her, but who, unlike her first husband, was fiscally responsible, had the means and the disposition to help her financially, and to help her recoup some of the material things that she had lost. Well, look, don't judge here, because knowing what you want in a relationship and its purpose in your life helps set you up for success. It's your life, your relationship, you get to do it your way. So she took her wants and headed out on her search, you know, and she, you know, trying to be in the right place at the right time, online dating, third wheeling, um, guesting at people's vacations and parties. And she went about, but she wasn't finding what she was looking for. Yet in the circles she was running in, she was able to find men with money, but most were married and looking for something in exchange for financial help. So when she came to me, again, she was feeling desperate and out of sorts and just didn't know what to do. So we did a lot of things together to what she needed to work on, but we did take her list and we defined and refined what she really wanted in a partner, not just a lifestyle. And we defined the deal breakers, things that were not, she was not going to accept. And we got really specific. And when I mean Ashley got really specific, I mean really specific. She wanted him, he had to have been married before, but widowed, not divorced. Sons, not daughters to be a professional, educated, a proper gentleman who was neat and non-smoker, who liked to travel, was appropriate, fiscally responsible, you know, on and on and on. Well, Ashley, um, as an update, was in Martha's Vineyard and someone introduced her to a friend and they hit it off. And a year later, um, she was engaged, bought a house together. Um, they, he had a vacation home in Martha's Vineyard that she's happily redecorating and she is happy and she got exactly what she wanted sans a couple of things. He was um, not widowed, he was divorced and he did have two daughters, not sons. But basically she got everything else that she wanted. So, to be like, uh, to uh, excuse me, Ashley, what she needed to do was she had to be as specific about his character traits and core values as she was about his looks and financial situation. And those core values were based on her core values. So a perfect gentleman and someone who was appropriate, that was somebody that was, you know, spoke to her Southern roots. You got to know your deal breakers as well as your deal makers. We talk about all the things that we want in a relationship and a partner, but we don't talk about the things we do not want. And that is vitally important. And you've got to know what kind of relationship you want to be in. Uh, and again, it's your relationship, so you get to make that choice. So the number one, reason that you are still single is that you are looking for love in all the wrong places. The number one thing standing in your way of finding love is you. You and your quest to find love from the outside, to find quality lasting love from another is an inside search. And once you've searched and found the love of self, knowing what you want and sharing that love with another person is a no brainer. So don't let it discourage you. Let it inspire you because you are the person and you have the power and control to change. Now, I told you I was going to tell you the number one secret to attracting a great partner. And that secret is being. 
a great partner. And you know when you are a really great partner, when you are feeling happily single. Because happily single equals ready for love. When I ask women, are they ready to be in love instead of just dreaming about it? You know, they all say, hell yeah. But they usually have misinterpreted the question. They're thinking, I'm asking them, do they want to be in love? No, I'm asking, are you ready? Are you the best possible partner that you can be? Do you understand love in all its different forms? And do you know what form you're looking for and what you're expecting from it? Are you happy and love with yourself? And do you have the quality of love to give that is an equal quality to what you were expecting to get back? Are you ready? Well, when my clients have gone through the work, are happily single, and are ready to manifest the relationship they want, this is the new mantra they learn to live their life by. That next level 3D mantra. Decide what you want, detach from the outcome, and go about living your best life while you wait for delivery. And the delivery, delivery is always a surprise when and where you least expect it. Like that pair of shoes, you know, you, you get in your head, you know exactly what they look like. You know the heel height, the vamp, you know what color. And at first, as soon as you think about them, you go searching for them. And you see some that are similar, but mm, not quite. And you have no problem letting them go, you know, because they are, you know, they're just not the one. And some you might even pick up and buy, but you know they're not replacing that one that you want. And you get busy with your life, and one day you're just passing this obscure sh shop, and there they are in the window. They are perfect. You go in, you try them on, and you're like, you don't him and haw over them because you know they're exactly what you want, and you trust your choice. And you know they're meant to be yours because they fit perfectly. A perfect Cinderella moment. And just like that Cinderella moment that can happen in your shoe closet, you can have that in your love life as well. You've just got to decide what kind of relationship and mate you want and affirm it. Then you have to detach yourself from it, just like Ashley did. She decided what she want with that list and she put it aside and went about working on herself and making herself the best partner she could be. And while she was doing that, she eliminated the three W's, the worry, the wonder, the whining. And you have to be open. And when you least expect it, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, in comes the love of your life. And in the meantime, you have been living your best life. And now he is just icing on the cake, the cherry on top of the sundae. So let's quickly connect the dots of what we've talked about today as we wrap up. Your positive thoughts create positive actions and behaviors that are based on your magnetic root energy. You're feeling self-love and great about yourself. Those, that energy is what you're attracting. Someone else who feels, loves themselves and feels great. That's who you're attracting. And once you decide what you want in a partner and a relationship, you detach yourself from it. Go on living your best life, knowing that magnetic root energy is out there bringing to you what you want. The law of attraction, which is bubbling up all around you, teams up with creating and manifesting in order to deliver to you the love you've been waiting for. Ladies, it works. It works. This is a next level mindset that once you learn it, it works in every area of your life. So today we talked about the five things that are really standing in your way and what you can do to change them. We talked about how it's allowed that you've been allowing your excuses or what you call reasons to dictate the actions that are leaving you stuck living the solo life. And that how you keep attracting the same energy that keeps you in that deja vu relationship cycle of attraction, drama, and failure. And how this painful cycle of rejection has leaving you unsure and afraid, not so much of love, but of not being loved. And how when you focus on the relationship and not the partner, you stay confused about what you really want and you end up alone and no longer trusting your choices. And how 
all of the above when combined with the empty searching has you sick and tired of playing hide and seek and look for love and the need to just stop trying to make it happen and let it happen. So I've shared with you these next level mindsets, some tips and tools that I use not only in my own life, but with my clients to successfully attract love in their lives and live happily while aligning with the love they want. And if all of this sounds good or even intriguing to you, that just means the law of attraction is working with us right now to put you in this space at this time. Now, earlier I said to you that I had a complimentary offer. So my question again is, are you ready to be in love instead of dreaming about it? And if the answer is yes, you want to get ready, then I have a special offer for you. Because I just don't want to give you all this information and then leave you out there thinking, now what? Because that would be like so wrong. So I've clear time in my schedule the rest of this week and some of next week to speak personally with you. I'd like to hear your story. And this call is completely free of charge. And together we're gonna to identify your top relationship breakers. I'm gonna share some of my sites, insights and, and tips. And together we're gonna to put together a little plan for you to get you thinking about your journey towards attracting that loving, fulfilling relationship you've craved. And once we've chatted, and if you see value in joining me at Stiletto U, we can discuss working together. And if it's a mutual fit, I will ask you to apply. Let me explain to you why I even have an application process, okay? So look, the work that I do at Stiletto U is transformational. And that said, I take on a limited number of clients at a time because this is, like I said, next level mindset. This is something that you have to learn and we are getting you ready for love. So I'm gonna give you all the time that I possibly can to make sure you learn it, get it right, and to get going, attracting the love that you want. So I love what I do and I'm really good at it and I get results. And I work really hard for my clients. So my expectation is that my clients work just as hard for themselves. My success rate is high, and that is because I picked the right clients. And you have to pick the right coach, too. So on this call, we're going to be able to scope each other out because the right fit is everything. And for me, I need you to really want to be attracting the love you want has got to be a priority right now. You've really got to be truly looking for change and not just a quick fix. You have to value yourself and your own happiness, and be willing to commit the time and money necessary to achieve success. And you gotta be tired of failing through, you know, the online datings and the please pick me methods and be open to this, open to this next level mindset that you're already using, but you don't know how to properly position it and go with it, okay? So, what I would like you to do, if you are at your wit's end and are done being on the losing side of love and you want to make a real change, if you're tired of feeling like something's wrong with you and you want to know your true worth and value as a partner, and if you're done wasting your time with unavailable mates who won't commit and you want to start attracting who and what you want while you become the best possible partner you can be, then make that call. Book a call with me. You can go to stilettoyou.com backslash apply and my schedule will be right there and you can put book a time. We'll talk and you may find out, you know what, this isn't for me and that's okay too. You'll still walk away with your plan and some other materials that I'm going to give you, but at least it will have you thinking about ways that you can change the way you go about attracting love. But you got to act fast. Because spaces are really limited. Because I promise you, I am not trying to create a factory. I am really taking on clients one at a time in order to really truly transform the way they love and the way they attract love into their life. And luckily, the interest is high. And so I'm really pleased about that. So please act fast. So the last thing I want to say before I close out, besides thank you for joining me, is don't ever, ever get comfortable living a life without, without whatever it is you say that you want, whether that's love, whether that's a relationship, whatever it is. Don't get stuck 
because circumstances have you leave you know alone and you don't know what to do you don't know where to go you don't know how to change help is available love is unlimited and if love is what you want i want to help you get it so book your call at stilettou.com apply and remember until we talk you are love and you are loved again thanks for joining me